you want me to explain how I explain insulin resistance to I would patients? I love, love that. Um, you know, it's just the way I do it. I don't, you know, there's lots of ways we can talk about this, but it seems to kind of work. So what I explain to the patient very simply is when you eat, you know, your blood sugars will go up. So blood sugars go up after a meal. Then what happens is the pancreas secretes insulin. You know, and the job of insulin is to bring those blood sugars down to normal. So, you know, I eat, my blood sugar goes up, my body secretes insulin, it goes down to normal. Well, if you're insulin resistant because of a genetic state, because of your diet, because of a mix of those things, you're metabolically all out of whack, and that's not working properly anymore. So what happens in that setting of insulin resistance or diabetes is that when you eat, your blood sugar goes up, your body produces insulin. But as, just as it says, it's insulin resistant. So basically, the insulin doesn't work to lower the blood sugar. So what happens is the blood sugar comes down a little bit. But then the pancreas is like, oh, wait a minute. I still have a high blood sugar. I need more insulin. So the little pancreas kind of works on overdrive to get more insulin in order to get the blood sugar to normal. And it's just working really hard all the time. The problem is high levels of insulin cause all sorts of problems. I mean, they affect lipoproteins. They, not only that, high levels of insulin make you gain weight yes. in your abdomen. So, and, and doctors, they're not measuring insulin levels. They're not paying attention to that. They look at the glucose. They're like, well, you're perfectly normal. There's nothing wrong with you. Your hemoglobin A1C is right in the optimal range, but this is going on. Now, the other thing that happens is your body's kind of stressed out trying to manage this insulin and the glucose mismatch here. So the next time that person eats carbs, you know, for breakfast, has a bagel and orange juice, all of a sudden the body's like, whoa, wait a minute. Last time this happened, I was working all night long to get this patient's insulin to a level that would somehow compensate. Forget about it. I'm just going to give them a boatload of insulin. So they eat the carb, the body secretes this huge amount of insulin. What does that do? It causes you to gain weight. Not only that, what happens to your blood sugar? It plummets. You actually have a low blood sugar. And what do you feel? You crave sugar. You crave carbohydrates. You're tired. You know, you eat and two hours later you crash. You know how many people that affects? I mean, many, many people experience that. And that's in part because the body is just trying so hard to make this work and it's not working. So now what happens is if the body and the pancreas keep doing this, keep over time working so hard to try to compensate for blood sugars. And we don't modify the blood sugars coming in because we're focusing on fat, we're not focusing on carbs. It's just getting worse and worse and worse. Eventually, your pancreas poops out. It's like, you know what? Not doing this anymore. The beta cells literally crash. They die. They stop working. So then what happens? Well, now you can't make all that insulin anymore. So insulin starts to come down. What happens to blood sugar? Blood sugar sugar starts to go up and then you know what all of a sudden boom now a doctor says oh you have diabetes but you know what that was going on 15 years earlier no one's paying attention to it because all they're looking for is this glucose level which by the time you have an abnormal glucose that's actually defined as even pre-diabetes you've lost 60 to 70 percent of your beta cells it's very difficult to get those beta cells back some of the newer drugs GLP-1 agonists and the other therapies may be able to regenerate beta cells but it's not easy Basically, once they're gone, they're gone. So we need to do a lot more up front. We need to tackle prediabetes and insulin resistance and do that by addressing the carbohydrates that are in absolute overload in our, in our society, in our diets. Deal with the exercise, which, which helps improve the way the body uses insulin. All of those pieces have to happen 10 to 15 years.